much. At the age of just 21, she became queen of Iran. But nothing could have prepared Farah Pahlavi for the life she would have with the Shah and the Islamic Revolution that turned their lives upside down. 25 years later, Queen Farah writes about her life in a new book called Enduring Love, My Life with the Shah. Your Majesty Queen Farah, good morning. Nice to good see morning. you. I understand that it was the death of your daughter that really prompted you to sit down and start writing about your life. How did that happen? What, what is, motivated you? You know, for many years I was thinking that it's my duty to write about my life, that period I was in Iran, and also for the memory of my husband, my children, my grandchildren, and for those Iranians who had not lived that period of Iran. And uh, I started three years ago when my daughter Layla was very sick and I felt so helpless, so miserable that I said I have to do it now. She suffered from terrible depression? Depression and chronic fatigue and all the pressures of this revolution, the losing of her father from one country to another, from one school to another and hearing what was said about uh, her father, all that was too hard for the, her to take, although <clears throat> excuse me, she was a very intelligent girl, very courageous and with a generous heart. Very beautiful, heart. my gosh, she was Thank just you. stunning. I, I always say that she's also a victim of the Islamic Revolution because so many young young people, so young, young Iranians inside and outside of Iran have suffered so much. Iran is such a different country than it was when you lived there. When you when you look at what has happened in that country in in recent years, it's it's really terrible. You know, these people came and they promised paradise and they opened the door to hell. It was a, Iran was a country going forward, developing, progressing, and the women had a place in their society and so many. Uh, really in every field, the education, industry, economy, health, and also we had good relation with the rest of the world, with the West as well as the Eastern Bloc then, good relations with our neighbors. It was peaceful and stable. And look what happened after the Islamic Revolution. It has unfortunately become the center of international terrorism and uh, religious fundamentalism. Can you describe for us that moment in 1979 when you and your husband were forced into exile? I remember it was a snowy day in January of that year. It was uh, really so hard, you know, after many months of anxiety and worries and really seeing where people want to go. You know, the problems, of course, there were problems or discontent, but because nothing. Because she had great dreams of reform. Exactly, and reforms were made, and <clears throat> because of some of the reforms, like the women's emancipation, the land reform made many religious people unhappy. And then we were seeing where the country is going in some sort of mass hysteria. And then, of course, to leave your roots, your country, your loved ones, your whatever is and dear to, to your heart. And to be told that there were so many countries that would not allow you to come in. You were finally exiled, I know, in the Bahamas, Mexico, Morocco, and Egypt. And I know President Nixon even came to visit you in Mexico, yes, didn't yes. he? And we were, of course, very touched. But I must say, during this period, although politically was uh, difficult and also humanly, but I always say that I'm grateful to President Sadat and the Egyptian people, the way they received us, and they showed that even in politics, moral values count. And also, so many people, ordinary people, who wrote to us kind letters, and it encouraged us a lot. Do you or harbor any animosity? toward the United States for not permitting you to come here, particularly when your husband was battling cancer? Well, you know, as I said, although humanly it's very hard to take, but then politically you can understand because countries are for their political interest and economical interest. And uh, we have to remember also that it was unfortunately during the hostage crisis, it was very del delicate for the establishment, 99 Americans were 
taken hostage and the Islamic Republic had violated all international laws. That happened by, shortly after you went yes, into exile. Yes. Do you it, remember your reaction to that taking place and could you see why some Iranians were so angry about their situations? I mean, when we were in New York, of course, uh, I remember very well and it was an excuse of the Islamic Republic not to receive uh, my husband. Uh, but uh, then again, you know, I say the Islamic Republic has violated all international laws by taking American land, uh, American diplomats as hostage. But thank God they were freed. What has your life been like in these past few decades since you were exiled, if you had to describe them, or your experiences since then? Well, you know, I have always considered that uh, you learn in life till the end. I've, of course, been through a lot, but I just before my program, I saw Amy. When I saw her courage, that young woman, you know, these are examples for all of us, even a grandma like me. But um, to just take care of my children, for them to settle and their education, and also so many Iranian who came to me, who wrote to me, and they needed help. And. Uh, <clears throat> fighting for Iran, fighting for freedom of Iran, democracy in Iran, because the majority of Iranian people are now really want to get rid of this regime. They have tasted this regime for 25 years. Do you ever envision a day when you can return to your country? Really, for me, the most important thing is freedom and democracy in Iran. And then the so many young Iranians and women to be free, like all the young people in the world and for me this is the most important thing but of course if one day I'm able to go back to my country it will be a great day well your majesty Queen Farah Pahlavi thanks so much for being here appreciate your time and the book is called an enduring love my life with the Shah thank you very much for having me so nice to meet you